Next on America's Most Influential Women, the difficult issue of child custody when one parent moves. Arlene Cook practices family law in the state of California, and she joins us now with her insight. Arlene, welcome to the program. It's a pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Now, first of all, I think we should make the distinction between joint legal custody and shared physical custody. Joint legal is a California term, and again, recognize that everything that I'm talking about here is from the standpoint of a California attorney. What joint legal means is that you have a shared health education and welfare determinations that are made jointly with the parents. Actual timeshare or physical custody is where does the child or children actually reside. And what are the typical facts in what we're talking about today, a move-away case? The typical one that you see that is rife with litigation possibilities is one where you have two parents actively involved in the child's life in California. One of the parents elects for one reason or another because of job changes, new relationships and the like, to relocate to another area. Now, that does not have to be a far distance in this day and age. Even a 30-minute addition to one's commute in a difficult corridor for commute can contribute to having an impact upon the children and their ability to have time with their parents. So what we are looking at are cases where the parent who does not wish to have the child relocated raises in the court a request to have the court examine whether or not this move is going to be in the child's best interest. Now, each family situation is different, of course, in the details. What types of parenting arrangements are affected in these cases? And as a follow-up, can the courts actually refuse a request to move? Yes, absolutely. The courts have the inherent power to do that. If the parties cannot agree, they can insist that the parenting relationship remain in a particular configuration where the child will stay either in the jurisdiction where the request is being made or in some instances the court can say, well, we are allowing the move with some significant restrictions. Now, the type of case that you normally see that falls into the network of a move-away case is where both parents have an ongoing significant role in the child's life. And that means, you know, after school activities and participating in school work and those kinds of things throughout the week. That can be almost referred to as a joint physical custody, even though it's not exactly 50-50. Anything probably beyond a 30% of a year's time would probably put you in the category of someone that would be a move-away case. What the court's looking at is, will this move somehow interrupt the child's life, interrupt the child's relationship to a parent and their peers as well as schooling? That's the focus of what the evaluation would be all about. Now, do you have any advice for our listeners who might find themselves facing this dilemma? Look at the realities of what will be happening for the best interest of the child or children. Always keep that focus as ambassador of your children. And if you can communicate with the other parent, please do so. Obviously, I'm not talking about cases where there's domestic violence or high conflict cases, but if you have a good relationship with the other parent, communicate with them. And if you just can't get through on resolving the matter, go sooner rather than later to court and retain an attorney to assist you. It takes a minimum of four to six weeks even to get into court unless it's an emergency situation. And obviously, if you approach this sooner than later, you can avoid it being an emergency situation. Good advice, Arlene. Thank you. Thank you very much. Arlene Cook from the law offices of Arlene D. Cook. We reached her in her San Ramon, California offices.